Tonight we're reading from Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. It's called the blessing. It says, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake you. And if, 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 if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Now, it said, if you hearken, that means listen diligently, like lean in, closely listen unto the voice of the Lord your God to observe and do his commandments. I want to stop here and just say that sometimes people think, is it God? Well, God can talk to us through our mind by planting a, a thought there. He can talk to us by other people who give us wise counsel that have knowledge and use their knowledge and give wise counsel. He can talk to us through the foolishness of preaching. He can talk to us through a dream. And he can talk to us through an action. He, uses, he used a donkey to talk to one of the prophets. To say you're going in the wrong direction. God had God had been, he knew, but he wasn't listening. So God had an animal speak to him. So God, if you hearken, listen, listen to the voice of God, you're gonna be blessed. And he said, I'll command thee. He's gonna command the blessings on you. And the blessings will come on you and overtake you. I mean, they're gonna wrestle with you and win. If you hearken to the voice of the Lord. Now, these are the kind of blessings that God is talking about tonight. He said, blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body and the fruit of your ground and the fruit of your cattle, the increase of the kind and the flocks of your sheep. Do you want to be blessed? then you need to listen, hearken to God's voice. He said, blessed shall be your baskets and your store. Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord shall cause your enemies that rise up against you to be smitten right before your face. They'll come out of you one way and they'll flee or run seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in your storehouses and in all that you set your hand to do. He shall bless thee in the land which the Lord your God gives you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto you. If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in His ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that you are blessed. It says they shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord shall make you plenteous in goods, in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your cattle, in the fruit of your ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give you. The Lord shall open up to thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto the land in a season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. Thou shalt lend unto many nations and shalt borrow and shall not borrow. The Lord shall make you the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If, again, he keeps saying, if you hearken unto the commandments 
of the Lord your God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. He's saying, I'm commanding you to observe my commandments. And if you do and you hearken, you listen, he said, you're going to be the head and not the tail. You're going to be above and not beneath. He says, and thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, not to the right or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. But listen, for every blessing and every if, there is an opposite. In verse 15, it says, but it shall come to pass, it shall come to pass, if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Cursed you'll be in the city and cursed you'll be in the field. Cursed shall be your basket and your store. Cursed shall be the fruit of your body and the fruit of your land, the increase of your kind and the flocks of your sheep. Cursed shall you be when you come in and cursed shall you be when you go out. The Lord shall send upon you cursing, vexation, and rebuke. In all that you set your hand unto for to do until you be destroyed and until you perish quickly because of the wickedness of your doings whereby thou hast forsaken me. God's saying, when you don't do these things, you're not hurting anybody around you. You're forsaking what I told you to do. So, you know, tonight I can read this word to you, but it's not my word. And I don't have the power in my hand to bless or curse anybody. But God does. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto you until he consume you from off the land where you go to possess it. In other words, you're on your way. You've got a plan. You've got a mission. But God says, if you do not keep his commandments and his statutes, the Lord shall smite thee with consumption, with a fever, with an inflammation, with an extreme burning, with a sword, with blasting, with mildew, and they shall pursue you until you perish. And the heaven that is over thy head shall be brass and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. Let me just stop here and interject. If you're praying and you don't feel God's presence, check to see if you're keeping his commandments and his statutes. Have you to truly surrendered your life to God? Have you? Have you said, God, I, I want to hearken unto you. I want to hear your voice. I, I, won't, I won't turn the right or the left. I won't go under the path that I want to go to. God, I'm going to do what you say. Because all these commandments and statutes aren't necessarily written in any book. Sometimes it's just God telling you, don't do that. And how does he tell you? I told you he can talk to your mind. He can talk through his word. He can talk where someone else imparts wisdom upon with you. And he's saying, no, you don't need to partake of that. I mean, there's a lot of things that you won't find in any Bible. It doesn't say thou shalt not smoke a cigarette because if you do, it can pollute your lungs and you can die of cancer before your time. It's not in the Bible like that. You have to seek God in your everyday life and everything you do. Ask him. Verse 25 says, The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. You shall go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them and shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. 
and thy carcass shall be meat to the fowls of the air and the beasts of the earth, and no man shall fray them away. The Lord will spite thee with the botch of Egypt and with the emeralds, that's tumors, with scab, with the itch. Y'all know about the itch. There's the seven year itch and the scabies and all kinds of parasites that get on our skin. There's um, lice. It says, and with the itch whereof thou canst not be healed. The Lord shall smite thee with madness, like you're just doing crazy things, and blindness, where you don't even see what's right or wrong anymore, and astonishment of heart. And you shall grope at the noonday, like in the brightest sun, when the sun is the brightest and everything is gray, you're going to be groping like lost. It says, blind gropeth in the darkness, and you shall not prosper in your ways, and you will be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. And no man shall save thee. Nobody can help you in this way. You shall betroth a wife and another man will lie with her. And you'll build a house and shall not dwell in it. You'll plant a vineyard and you will not gather the grapes thereof. Your ox will be slain before you and you'll not eat it. Thine ass will be violently taken away from before your face and shall not be restored. Your sheep shall be given to your enemies and you shall have none to rescue them. Your sons and daughters shall be given unto another people and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in your hands. The fruit of thy land and thy labor shall a nation which you know not eat up, and you shall be only oppressed and crushed away, so that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes which you see. It goes on, the Lord shall smite thee in your knees and your legs with a botch that cannot be healed from the sole of your foot to the top of your head. The Lord shall bring thee and your king, which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation which neither nor thy fathers have known. And you'll serve them and become an astonishment and a proverb. You know, I don't want to keep going because there's it's it's been enough. I, I've said enough. You know, people are saying, why is, you know, this is what people say. You know, our world's a really cruel world, and where's God, and why is he letting this and that happen? Because he gave, he gave mankind a choice. You saw right here, he said, if you keep my commandments and statutes, all these blessings are going to come. If you don't, all these things are going to come. I mean, it's an if-then relationship. If you're nice to somebody, then usually... They'll be nice back. You know, the Bible says a kind word turns away wrath. But here we have it. We got a, a crazy world around us. It's a lot of stress and anger and death and deception and lying and, and cheating and stealing and, and people abusing each other and children. And you say, why does all this go on around in me? Well, that's because people around us every day have a choice. He said, choose good and life or choose evil and death. It's a choice. Choose to obey God's commandments. And you know, think about this. It doesn't even take any common sense, regardless of what your religious religion is, when God said, thou shalt not kill. We all know and have <laughs> seen someone who's died around us. <laughs> right? So God saying, thou shalt not kill. Do we, do we even have to think about that? Don't lie. Don't kill, don't steal, don't um, 
don't have fake gods. I mean, there's all these, it's not only commandments, but they're statues. And they're for our benefit because in the New Testament, Jesus said it like this. If you love God first with all your heart, your soul and your mind, and your neighbor as yourself, he said all the commandments and statutes you'll, you'll just automatically do. That's what he says. He said, it, it's just, he said, if you want, if you do that, it's going to fulfill all the law. It's how we, how we treat God first, how we treat our God first. And second, how do we treat each other? I wanted to, um, I wanted to, to speak on, on, something else but you know it's the beginning of this year in january and you know new years are new beginnings god wants to give us an opportunity to have a new beginning you know kind of a reset a restart i know i shared it about what we want to pursue or change and do in our life i talked about the change in one of the earlier messages and God was saying, okay, you got an opportunity to change some things. Use the new year. Don't be superstitious, but use the new year to give yourself a restart. Start saying, okay, I know I did this last year and that last year. I shouldn't have done this and I should have done that. And, and then, you know, God's saying, okay, but, you know, you still didn't do it. You still didn't make up in your mind that you are going to follow the commandments and the statutes of God, which ultimately will affect everyone around you, not just you. You don't just, you don't, none of us can say we make decisions that do not affect others around us. Every one of us influence and makes decisions and how we behave ourselves, how we act, how we do everything determines how others around us are affecting. You know, you say, well, I can do my own thing. I'll do this or that, but it doesn't work like that. You are not only destroying yourself, but your influence and people around you, they are being affected by this, good or bad. That's why many times people that have addictions with alcohol or drugs, their children grow up with the same addiction, either alcohol or drugs, and they're usually worse because they did not just destroy their own body. They destroyed people around them. I'm going to put this, uh, I'm going to put this message out on um, the, the WhatsApp read Deuteronomy 28 or play this over and listen to it again. But I ask you, take time to think about it. Just no distractions. Just take time to think about God's ultimatum, really. If you keep my commandments and statutes, all these blessings, they're going to just take you over. They are going to take over in your life and you won't even be able to stop it. Or if you do not and you hurt others around you, because that's all God wants. I really want to bring it home. If you keep God's ways, you won't hurt other people around you. You won't make them stressed or distraught. You'll bring joy to their life. That's all God wants. He wants you to be happy and he wants you to make others around you happy. I believe that if you read this or you listen to it and you meditate on it and you think about it, I believe the blessings can overtake you so much you won't even be able to control the blessings in your life.